Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Well guys, uh, we're finally here to discuss Sugar Mama and the situation that we all notice when she's with her father, Martel Holt, how it looks as if Sugar Mama is being neglected. You know, she's taking second place to Knox and all of these things that the middle children which is the middle children syndrome gets and experiences now sugar mama is not a middle child in her her you know in her actual uh, family with her mother you know as her custodian you know as her primary caregiver she is not the middle child but she is sort of you know, the lap baby, the middle child when it comes to Martell. Although there are five children in total, a middle child is usually three children, you know, three kids. But in this case, there are five kids, you know, in Martell's situation. However, you know, his child out of wedlock with Arion Curry, you know, pretty much uh, took Sugar Mama's initial infant baby stages, you know, and speeded it up to a faster process. Now, usually, you know, the kid that shows more maturity, you know, is able to do things on their own, whether older or older than the youngest child, usually takes second place. It's not fair. It's, you know, it's not fair. It's nothing fair about it, but that's just how it is. You understand? And so, no, did, you know, is it fair that Sugar Mama has to take, you know, second to um, Maverick or Knox? No, it isn't, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but you have to be intentional about it. And I don't know if Martell or any man has those sort of, you know, attributes. You know, you have to be intentional. You have to pay close attention. You have to be intentional about spreading your care, about spreading the attention. And, you know, it could, it could get lost. You know what I'm saying? It could get lost in the wind if you're not paying attention to these things. You know, in Martel's mind, I mean, face it, he may think that, you know, he's, you know, being equal. He's sharing his love, his attention equally amongst all of his kids. We know that Knox is the baby of the family, you know, and he does require more attention. You know, he is not well-versed and, you know, as mature as the other kids. So quite naturally, he is going to get more of Martell's attention. You know, he seems to have had, I mean, you know, he's he's gotten much better, but he seems to have had, I don't know if he was spoiled or, you know, he may have, um, he may have a disability as far as his speech. He may have a heavy tongue. There could be a number of things going on with Knox, why his speech is delayed. He could have a speech delay. He could be perfectly fine. You know, all kids develop at a different time in different ways, different stages. Some kids talk faster than others. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's on the spectrum or something is wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I think that's horrible. You know, none of us have diagnosed him. None of us are doctors to have diagnosed him. Yes, he does have some of the traits. He does have, you know, some of the, um, some things to the visual eye does look like that, but none of us really know. You know what I'm saying? Unless he's been evaluated, you know, by um, someone in that field, a specialist. That's the only way we can tell if he has autism, he's on the spectrum, or he's delayed, a speech delay, or any of those uh, disabilities. You know, none of us have done that. Arion has not posted that. Martel has not posted that. So we don't know, you know, if he's, um, you know, 
growing in the um, manner in which he should be growing. You know, his speech is up to par in the manner in which it should be. I know some kids are shy. Some kids are later to talk. Some kids are later to, to walk. Some kids are later to potty train. You know, when we start labeling kids and putting all these things on them, we get into trouble. We get into trouble. So now, I mean, quite naturally, women are naturally nurturers. That's how God created us. That's how God built us. We, most of us, you understand? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a handful. There's women who, you know, some women don't even want kids. You know, they had kids. They don't even like kids. And so they just deal with the kid because they have to. So there's a, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. There is a sector of women who, you know, feel like they was pressured into having kids or they just had uh, kids because of the social norms or, you know, because they feel like they was pressured by either their mom, their husband, or their family, you know, like something was wrong with them if they didn't have any kids. And they really didn't like kids. They really didn't want kids. It's a real thing. Some women don't like kids, period. You know, they don't like noise. They don't, you know, and, and, you know, people say it's selfish. I mean, I wouldn't go that far to it. But, I mean, yeah, some people have said, yes, I don't want to have to give all of my attention to, you know, a child. I like buying things. So that could be considered selfish. You know, some people, you know, they want to dress how they want to dress. They want to live how they want to live. And a baby just doesn't fit in that. You know, a baby doesn't fit in that. They don't want to have to share their money on, you know, expenses that you have to, you know, use when you have a baby involved. So there's a number of things. You know, going back to what I was saying is God created us women as nurturers, period. You understand, can men nurture their kids? Of course they can. Do they? Yes, they do. But do they do it to the extent in which women do? I don't believe so, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You understand? Now, are there single dads doing the darn thing? Of course there is. Are there single dads with no mother involved? You understand? I mean, some may have a girlfriend, you know, and eventually get a wife involved, but I, I know men who are taking care of their kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, do I think I mean, and some of them do it better than some mothers who don't want the job, who don't want the position, who have neglected their kids. Women neglect their kids the same as some men do. You know, it's nothing about, uh, you know, bashing men or bashing women. Both sexes neglect kids. Both sexes, you know, both sex sexes uh, sometimes are, they're selfish. You know what I'm saying? It's about me, me, me. You know, they don't put their kids first. It happens in both sexes. You understand? Now, you know, do I think that kids, especially girls, should be raised by, by a single dad? No, unless it's necessarily, you know, unless they necessarily have to. You know, um, in the case of perhaps if, you know, the mom is deceased or... Um, you know, the mom is unfit. We know these things happen, you know, in divorces sometimes. You know, the father gets the kid. You know, I guess if the mother's neglectful. You know, it depends on the circumstances. You know, do I think, you know, kids should be with a fit mother? I do. You know, that that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You know, I believe women are natural nurturers. And, you know, we're just going to get the job done. Again, not all women, you know, the majority of women, you know, again, you know, there's a handful that, you know, of course, do women neglect their kids? We all understand that. We understand that. We've seen these things happen, you know, so many times. We've seen these things happen. You know, it, it's a case by case basis. You know, we've seen that we've seen men have, you know, kids by their mistresses, you know, outside of their marriage. It happens all the time. This situation has been magnified because it is on TV. I'm sure some of you women probably have experienced it. You, your cousins, your aunts, your sisters, somebody you know close in your family or you've seen it in your surrounding areas. You've seen them go through this. 
You know, it, it's, a, it's a hard situation, I'm sure. It's a hard situation. You know, the blending of families. You know, is it possible? Do people get over it and do it? Yes. Yes, they do. But we have this on a magnifying glass because it is playing out on TV right before our eyes. You understand? A lot of us feel emotionally attached and we feel more involved than we should be in this situation. Why? Because we're women first. And, you know, we just don't like the idea of a lot of things. And so we have something to say. Now, again, like I said, it doesn't have to be like this. You understand? Martel has to be intentional about it. He has to be, you know, have to constantly have this on his mind, you know, constantly paying attention and really, you know, paying close attention to how he spreads, you know, his, uh, you know, his, um, his attention, you know, between Sugar Mama and all the kids, but mainly between Sugar Mama and Knox. You know, it, it's hard. It's hard. You know, it's hard. It's hard for women. It's hard for women, and that's what we do. So I know, you know, um, I know it's hard, you know, for for men. I know it's hard for men to do it. Again, it could be done, but you know, he has to be he has to be intentional about it. And he has to focus in on it along with doing everything else. And we know we women, you know, we get it done. You know, we do, you know, 10, 20 things at the same time, you know, but we get it done. And some even, you know, get it done holding down full-time jobs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the single, um, the stay-at-home mom is a whole nother situation, you know, you know, her time is allotted to these things, the household and so on and so forth, but it's still a job. It's still an important job. Motherhood and fatherhood is one of the most important jobs that we will ever do in our life. Some people don't agree with that. You know, again, that's a whole nother story. Now, we know that Melody gives Sugar Mama the utmost, the utmost attention. You know, she's intentional about it. It's her baby. She's the baby of the family. Everybody else is, you know, is um, mature. They're on their, you know, they're not on their own. But, you know, they can get themselves dressed. They can feed themselves. They they could do a lot of things by themselves. And I'm sure Sugar Mama can as well. But, you know, she is Melody's baby. She is the baby of the house. And so she is used to getting the attention you know we see that you know she mimics um you know boss baby they're very close she does everything boss baby does she has grown in a tremendous you know a tremendous speed you know she is very mature for her age you know she is well versed in a lot of areas and you know she just um she just impresses us all You know, because we can't believe she's three years old, you know, with the way she carries on. So it's a vast difference between Melody, Melody's parenting and Martell. We understand that. We understand that, you know, Melody is not caring for Knox along with her other four kids. You know, you know, the question has been raised, well, why he should get Knox on another week, you know, another time. Yes, you know, I mean, that would be hopeful. That would be nice. You know, I don't believe it's likely, you know, because, you know, he wants to have him when he has his other kids. Why? For bonding purposes. And, you know, he doesn't want both of his weeks, you know, revolving around his kids. I don't know when he's supposed to, you know, um, well, I guess he could go out to work if he gets, he says he has he says he has a nanny or or babysitters or whatever, you know, um, that he also said that he would share with Melody, but that's a whole nother situation. So I guess he could work, you know, whatever week. He could even work while the kids are there, but I don't know if he chooses to do that, if he chooses to work the weeks off, the weeks he doesn't have the kids. You know, I guess I don't know if that's when he does his entrepreneurial things, but however, he says he does have a babysitter, he has his mother, you know, when she's available. And so you do what you have to do 
the same way that women do what they have to do. But I just wanted, you know, to touch bases on this situation because it is a hard situation to look at, to talk about, to deal with, you know, um, you know, it, it is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot for any man. It's a lot for any woman. It's a lot for any woman, especially a man who is not used to being the primary, you know, he said he was the primary caregiver, but uh, no, no, no. I mean, it, I don't know. That's, that's, you know, that's still up. That's still up for discussion. But again, you know, I believe he did spend a lot of time with his kids, but he spent a lot of time outside the home as well. You know, so, I mean, it's not to take anything away from Mel saying that he was a primary parent caregiver. You know, I'm sure he was very involved you know, with his kids, okay? Uh, we'll touch on the situation with him saying, you know, he taught his kids to cook. You know, he's hands-on. He he thinks these things are important. You know, he allowed um, Mariah to go in the store as he sat outside. I don't know if he sat outside or if he was in the store. It, it wasn't uh, stipulated. He did have her, he did video her coming to the car as if she was in the store by herself. I don't know. But, you know, he wanted to teach her life skills. You know, in the day and age that we end, could that have been, you know, a dangerous hmm? I I mean I it could have been, but I mean I think I think it was fine if he was right outside the store, you know, she was in a public place in the store. Again, he had to be fully available, paying close attention. You know what I'm saying? With uh, with the four other kids in the car, you know, he gave her money or whatever to teach her life skills, how to go in, get her groceries, go pay for them, come out. I I think it was fine. I think it, I, I think it was excellent. I think it was excellent to give her that experience. You know, we may not, you know, even consider how old um, Mariah is. I believe she is 11 or 12. So I, I think it was fine. I think it was fine. They raised her. You know, she has a pretty good footing, a pretty good foundation. You know, she knows right from wrong. She knows not to talk to strangers. You know, if they've instilled all these, you know, permanent, uh, pertinent things in her, you know, and she's aware of her surroundings and so on and so forth, she has a cell phone. I think that, I think that situation was, was awesome, you know, for him to teach her life skills, how to get in the kitchen, and whip up some things and, you know, I, I think that was awesome. So, you know, there's controversy on that, but again, um, it's hard, it's tough. You know, will he get knocks at a different time that he has the Eminem kids? I don't believe so. You know, if he's forced to, I don't know if a judge would force him to do that. You know, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I know, you know, I, I don't know if he wants his break, you know, his weeks off. It, it, it's tough because we know that women do it 365 days a week. Some women do it without any breaks. And, and that's just what it is. That's just what it is. You know, we could argue about that all day. We could argue about that all day. But, you know, it said that, um, you know, Sugar Mama wanted to get in the cart. And I said the same thing. He could have had both of them in the cart. He could have technically had two carts. Was he thinking that? I don't believe so. You know, Mariah could have been, uh, you know, pushing the cart with the food, and he could have had both kids in the cart, problem solved, period, you know? But again, we don't all think alike, you know what I'm saying? That would have been my perspective. That That's something that I may have done if I had all those other kids with me to help out. Now, and if you're by yourself, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to, to maneuver two carts. But with Mariah and Tank, we know that Tank was doing the filming. You know, Tank had the, uh, the phone or whatever. So, you know, he probably wasn't as available as Mariah was. But again, you have to think of these things. And if that's just not something you're used to doing, if that thought doesn't cross your mind, it's just not something you're going to do. We could talk about it after the fact, but you know, you can't give the, a person the same credit that you would get. Oh, I can't believe he or she did this. I would never, right, you would never. But some people who, 
you know, morality compass is not as yours is, they don't really care what they do. You know what I'm saying? They don't consider what they do. Some people are very considerate of what they do and how they do it. You know, some people care about these things. Others don't. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And guys, leave your comments down below on how you think this situation uh, could be resolved or, you know, could um, lessen the uh, opportunity of sugar mama feeling left out or neglected. Thanks again, guys.